Of course, it doesn't uh, require me to uh, say how uh, challenging and difficult uh, it has been for so many all around the world. And this pandemic has, I think, caused just uh, so much, uh, so many loss of life and so many more uh, difficult situations, not only with the disease, but in many different aspects. And I'm sure we will all agree that um, although even uh, some sense of balance uh, of the situation is found uh, with the disease itself, with the pandemic itself, there are countless, numerous other challenges that will follow and which we will all have to face in this world in the future. Interestingly, uh, as uh, Dharma practitioners, um, the nature of uh, change, impermanence, and the uh, transitoriness of everything is a subject that we uh, think about, that is what is taught in the teachings. And as practitioners, this is something that we keep in mind. And that's supposed to be very, very uh, poignant and um, uh, something that we have to keep in mind all the time. And we do try to do that. But I think even so, uh, many of us tend to so very often uh, forget about this. I think in sometimes we don't necessarily completely forget about it, but it's somewhere in the back of our mind. And we uh, don't really meet with the reality of nature of phenomena being change, that impermanence is happening at all times. There's always that little uh, sort of hope that uh, you and I will not have to experience that, yes, of course, the change will come and everything is impermanent, but not quite right now. So with that kind of an attitude, when we uh, hold on to things, when we try to be very, very uh, sort of uh, fixated upon just holding on very tightly, not really being aware of the change in the impermanence, and then, of course, uh, reality being that everything is impermanent, change occurs, change happens. And when that change happens, it frustrates us so much. It creates so much anxiousness and fear and unsettledness in us. So it's quite like the habit of holding your fist very tightly. And if you grab a you know fistful of sand and you really tighten your grasp and you feel each grain of the sand slip past uh, your fist and it just keeps slipping and you're left with, you know you're left with nothing, but just the fear and the um, sort of the resistance to what is happening, you tend to tense up, you tend to really tighten it even more and more. So I think in many ways um, that happens. Uh, change and impermanence is the nature and the reality of everything and everything changes moment to moment, everything is changing, everything is impermanent. But when we try to still sustain this uh, unrealistic hope that uh, it won't happen quite right now, that if I don't think about it, maybe it won't happen right now, or that it happens, but uh, not in the way that, you know, uh, will be something that I will meet directly with it. So, of course, um, the fear uh, is always there. And when the change does happen and big changes happen and shifts happen and uh, things uh, really move on to being something that is very unpredictable and something that we are not really prepared about, then inevitably the fear and the anxiousness and the unsettledness uh, and the irritability uh, does increase. And I think it creates some... Um, um, a very deep frustration for many of us. Some of us will tend to just be utterly frustrated and feel very hopeless. And uh, that increases the restlessness and unsettledness and the anxiety within us. Some people have, again, the habit of just trying to shift and move on to something else that they think is probably going to not change. So from one change which you, can't, you find difficult to really meet with, you tend to look at something else that you think is going to be more permanent than this situation. It's a very, very tricky kind of a thing where then people just will be in a denial of some sorts and then think that, well, this is changing, this is shifting, I'm very uncomfortable with this, 
、uh, maybe I should go there. Maybe I should relate to that. That looks more permanent, or that looks something that is going to give me a sense of security. So in doing so, then I think、uh, you just prolong the problem in many ways. Of course,、uh, change、um, has always occurred. The world has seen, whether it is the great world wars and the many changes that have happened、uh, after that,、uh, whether it is, of course, all the different kinds of pandemics and that which has changed、uh, the world, and not only in bad ways, but industrial revolution and how much changes, how many changes happened after that. And also many different scientific in,、uh, inventions and how things changed after that. So、uh, when that change happens, what it does devour is、uh, what we are familiar with, how we live life,、uh, people we are familiar with, systems we are familiar with, the way we do things, and we tend to、um, really fixate upon them. And in our tendency to not really Meet face to face with the reality of impermanence. We latch on to things that,、uh, in their、uh, sort of disguise of being uh, uh, familiar, uh, we think that that's going to be more permanent in nature. So I、uh, would like to take this opportunity to encourage all of you to, as much as possible,、uh, turn your mind back to reflecting deeply. On the teachings,、uh, especially the truth of impermanence and change, and instead of、um, tensing up, becoming frustrated,、uh, and、uh, sort of feeling a sense of loss,、uh, to realize,、uh, to channel this、uh, energy of seeing the nature of impermanence into further strengthening your connection to the Dharma. So transforming adverse、uh, circumstances always. What is difficult and what you learn from your own direct experiences of life in samsara, to be able to, with awareness and、uh, discriminating wisdom, that sees clearly things as as they are, and allowing that to fuel and create a much more powerful、uh, sense of awakeness. That which then strengthens your connection to the Dharma and gives more meaning to your practice. This is, I think, very very important, and I hope that and I encourage each one of you to do this. Now, I think it is、uh, with that,、uh, keeping that in mind,、um, one of the topics that I have been、uh, asked to speak to you is about transforming suffering into happiness. One of the Wonderful teachings of Dodrupchen Jigme Tembe Nima's uh, teachings, uh, which is I think available and tr- wonderfully translated in the uh, Lotawa uh, translators' archive, which you can all、uh, refer to.、Uh, I have been asked, Maro and uh, uh, the Rigba International people,、uh, the Vision Board people, have asked me to speak about that first, and so I will begin to just. Share some of my thoughts about it. It's a wonderful te-、uh, text, and it's wonderfully translated, and it's very clear. So there's,、uh, I think,、uh, you can just read through it, and that itself is very clear. But、uh, even so, just because、uh, it is something that we all need to benefit and reflect upon, I'd be very happy to share that with you all.